good. Just gonna drop the uh, band onto the ball here. Actually. Yeah, Southwest Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I find it a great cover to shoes. Maybe put the swimmers in there too, it'll be <laughs> But you could put a carton of beer in there and a couple of bottles of wine out of, out of the way. It's got your main control panel in here with your main breaker. You've got some more 12 volt outlets. Just done our tastings, we did all 14 flavours. G'day guys, welcome to another episode. What are we doing in this episode? Well, we're heading north. We did have grand plans to head south, but uh, the weather's told us that that's a bad idea maximum of 18 where we were planning on going yeah. so we've decided to go north back towards the Bundaberg region we've been there uh, a couple of months ago yeah a couple of months ago we had such a good time so we'll be about 50 k's north right out on the ocean Mobo's going to get a stand-up paddleboard out and go for a paddle yeah should be good hopefully there's some sharks to make the footage extra exciting <laughs> we have the uh, stealth 15 in tow good old Barry's got another new girlfriend and uh, we've got the big sister of the Stealth 12 that we had in our previous review for Jawa. It's the so first time that we've ever had a solid back caravan yeah. so Mavo's very excited about that because she doesn't have to make the bed. Yeah she's already made. I don't know what I'm gonna do. No, sit around and tell me <laughs> what to do I would say. Here we are, the Stealth 15 all ended up at Rocky Point campsite, which is about 45 minutes north of Bundaberg, northeast of Bundaberg. Um, we're right on a bit of an estuary here. Beautiful big sites. The water's moving far too fast for the stand up paddle boarding. There she is. Doing a photo shoot, mate. So, our first setup with a van with a solid back. Shot clear difference to uh, the models in the range that have the bump out bed um, significantly quicker um, I don't know why it's so much quicker it feel oh you I guess with the bump out bed you've got to undo the big bolts that hold the spare tires in place drop your tight spare tires down unlock all your locks on the latches and those sorts of things so I guess it probably does save you five to ten minutes and then the electric roof actuators take all the work out of it you just undo the latches and up she goes it's pretty windy at the moment so we're not going to put the awning out that would have given us another three minutes work to do but um here we are All right, let's jump into the uh, walk around of the Stealth 15. So as usual with most off-road vans these days, we've got dual spares here. This one's actually got all terrains on it. So uh, a little bit different from the usual mud terrains, but that is an option when you order the van as to whether you nominate an all-terrain or a mud terrain. Uh, for reference, when we did our lap, we had mud terrains. As soon as I got home, I put all-terrainers on it because you just get better tire wear, to be really honest. Mud trains look good, but you don't really need them um, unless you're doing some really, really hardcore stuff. There's a couple of things I do want to show you quickly here though. Uh, what we've got here is a solar input Anderson plug off the rear bar. So I've attached the uh, trusty Enerdrive soft panel there, and that's just bumping the 400 watts that are on the roof with the 240 here up to 640. We've left um, camp this morning and the batteries up to 100%, no worries at all. So let's keep rolling around. 
It's got the outlet here for the Truma hot water system. It's your standard uh, gas or electric hot water system. Outdoor shower, as you would have seen in our previous videos with the kick-ass shower tent. And we've also got our water filler uh, for our mains and for our off-grid tanks here as well. Uh, your 15 amp lead in for your electricity or your mains power connection. And here you've got your outlet for your Truma gas heater, which is also a standard inclusion on the Stealth 15. So rolling right around, pretty straightforward. We've got our toilet here. We've got our tunnel boot. Can you see in there, hon? Oh, not really, actually. Not really? I'll open the on, other side. Yeah, open the other side. <laughs> so our tunnel boot, uh, a little bit bigger than the Stealth 12, this particular tunnel boot. So um, obviously a bigger van, you'd expect things to be a tiny bit bigger. And then in here, same innovation as the Stealth 12, you've got your generator slide, but these really handy uh, slide out drawers ready to go so that you're not wasting this big cavern here. So room for your generator to sit and strap down here and then room for maybe your recovery gear, your hoses, your power leads and all of those sorts of things. Just depends on how you want to configure your van, but the great thing is there's those handy drawers there. So let's move around to the front here. As you saw on the 12, these beautiful big toolboxes, which are a new addition um, and an, uh, certainly an upgrade from this van's predecessor, which was the uh, Solera 15 solid. Gas bottle holders, nine kilos, ready to go. Uh, dual, you've got room here for um, whatever, whichever way you want to configure these big toolboxes. You've got two, one either side uh, that you can fill up with all your gear. Now let's quickly have a look at the draw bar. It's relatively standard. This draw bar is slightly longer than the Stealth 12. Given the play of the van, it is handy to have a little bit of a longer draw bar. But uh, let's run through what we've got here. So we've got handbrake, obviously, the, uh, the trusty outdoor tap, and then we've also got the DO35 hitch. Uh, I've gone through this in previous videos, but it's a great piece of kit. Swivels 360 degrees, which is a bit tight, but uh, those types of things that you hope you never have to use, but it's nice peace of mind knowing that you've got it there. You've also got your electrics for your, or your power supply for your breakaway cable, just in case the van comes away from the car, uh, and your ARC 750 jockey wheel. So um, again, uh, all standard inclusions on all the jar range, but top quality. I was actually saying to Movo this morning, how good are these ARC jockey wheels? We've had no issues with ours in over 12 months on three different vans now. So uh, let's run around to the other side of the, the business side of the van. Don't hit your knees. No. <laughs> Close up. Oh, actually, I'll open that again. It's got your main control panel in here with your main breaker. You've got some more 12 volt outlets here, amp meter, um, and all of those sorts of things. Your main kill switches uh, inside here, as we always have. Your 95 liter series two evercool fridge talked about this in the last video but once again guys you can run this as a fridge freezer combo freezer both sides fridge both sides and a bit of innovation from evercool on this particular model you can actually shut one side down and only run the one um one compartment of the fridge which is really cool jawa pantries as usual gee you pack light this time over <laughs> um on nearly all of the Jawa models, so um, pretty standard for anybody that knows them, but this is the part that differentiate for me, the re research and development over the years that the Jawa crew have done, which just make their vans a bit more comfortable. All right, let's uh, move over here. We've got a bigger tray table, um, lots of room for lots of beers. <laughs> if you've got lots of friends coming over. Got an outdoor TV outlet. I don't think I talked about this with the Stealth 12, but you've got all your um, your connections for your TV here, and you can actually lift your TV from the inside and bring it out here and, and whack it there. We haven't got the awning up today because it's it's quite windy, particularly the wind gusts. Right, now, this is slightly different to the Stealth 12. In the 15, you've got this nice big um, slide out pantry. I actually don't think Gee, it was on the I didn't pack that one. very neatly, No, you I? didn't pack it very neatly, but what you do find in here is a nice Jawa <laughs> cutting board. So if uh, you've already got a Jawa, uh, or you're picking one up, make sure you grab one of these. Well, it's a very good gift for somebody that's got a Jawa. 
I like that actually. I like that because you're not limited with your height as much. So your pots and pans can yeah, stick true. up quite high. So you don't have to make sure that it is level with the actual drawer. You can actually leave things sticking out. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, I didn't, I think I stepped this on the last walk around, but the improvements on these seals and pinch welds um, over the years is, and these latches are yeah. unreal. You don't have to lock them when you travel. Uh, I always found with your Infinity that we had to lock them when we travel. Um, and obviously if you're going to a trustworthy area, um, we've got our two lift up pantries, the same as the 12 here. Um, they're slightly deeper, I think, on this particular model. Um, as you can see, just all of our gear. <laughs> and then moving around, uh, pretty standard, but I didn't show this much on the last video. You've just got your water tank um, gauges there uh, and the main controls, one for the gauges another one for the 12 volt down here and another one as well for um, actually turning the water pump on. So that's all there. And just stock standard four burner sink and four burner uh, cooktop. Nice big drawers on this one as well to keep the Movo happy with the, uh, we lost a spoon. I don't know how we lost a spoon today. Yeah, I don't know. Know. It'll turn up somewhere. And that is pretty much it from an outdoor walk around perspective. Now we're going to join the Mavo on the inside, remembering that this is very exciting for us because it's the first solid back van that we've had. So solid back meaning that we don't have to uh, fold the bed out and Mavo doesn't have to climb around and move the mattress every time we set up. So come on in, I'll show you all around in the Stealth 15. Mavo. I love the bed, it's a king size bed and I don't have to fold out the bed every time we arrive at a new destination. So this has been a major game changer for me. It's, I love it. She's um, drunk two ciders by the time I've <laughs> set up the outside. It is so good. So I love that about uh, the 15. So we've got the king size bed. We've also got a larger seat here as well. It also does come with a table, but we took it out just for this trip. So we'll show you, we'll put some pictures up of the table in the van. Yep. Um, we've also got the uh, larger cupboard. So in the 12, it, the cupboard was probably about this big. It was enough for us, it was awesome. But in the 15, you've got an even larger cupboard. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. To store all your goodies. Um, and also a larger drawer for your towels. Yeah, that's massive too. Yep. And then a larger uh, cupboard for your footwear. <laughs> well, I find it a great cupboard for shoes. Maybe you could put your swimmers in there too, it'll be full, won't it? <laughs> You're a comedian. Yeah. Um, underneath the Jawa seat is an awesome compartment for anything that you would like to take on your holiday, but not have to, reg ooh, not have to regularly get to, I guess. So maybe you could store your floaties in here. You could store um, your backup alcohol, remembering you don't want to overdo your weight, but you could put a carton of beer in there and a couple of bottles of wine out of, out of the way. I've measured it. It would fit two 30 packs of cans, <laughs> plus half a dozen bottles of wine and a 10 pack of ciders for the boss over here. <laughs> And we found this little gem in here. It's a lined little compartment that's, oh, how big would that be? Oh, a room for a carton. You reckon? Room for a 30 pack block of cans. Wow. <laughs> that is Or 15 cool. pairs of shoes. Just also, really quickly as well, guys, while I've got this open, I might as well talk through the power setup here. Slightly different to the Stealth 12, um, in that Enerdrive DC-DC, 40 amps, we've got the battery charger, which uh, runs on 40 amps as well. And then we've also got, a little bit different to the Stealth 12, is the power pass or the AC transfer 2000 watt Enerdrive inverter. It's a slightly different spec um, to the Stealth 12 in that it only had the uh, standard 12, uh, sorry, 2000 watt Thunder inverter. So um, full Enerdrive kit out in this particular one. You guys know how I feel about Enerdrive, great quality, um, great reliability, and a little bit like Java, great after sale service as well from the team at Enerdrive. So uh, thumbs up to the set out in the Stealth 15. And oh, yes. 
there is a really, really, really cool innovation in this particular van. I don't know whether it was in the original Solera 15. However, we found this super cool and it'd be something that'd be really handy when you're traveling in the outback and you're a little bit worried about security. So what, what have you found here, maybe? Yeah, a little um, safe compartment. So yeah. you can put all your valuables in there and out of the way and out of sight. And then you can also close her up and lock it away. And for people like us, that is big enough to put your, your laptop, mm. your drone, yeah. your GoPros and those sorts of things in there. So anything of real value, you can put it in this little safe compartment and it's lockable. So that is a great innovation. Yeah. Um, you've got your normal standard smart Jawa TV as well. Just sits there nicely in the corner. You've got your heater control unit oh, yeah. up here, whereas in the Stealth 12 it was down um, by our feet. So it's actually up here, which is a really good spot for okay, it. Okay, so you've got your standard shower. So this to me appeared to be the exact same footprint as the Stealth 12. It's still got the amazing shower head, so yeah. D is really happy. It is a lovely shower head. Yeah. And you've also got the front that was the same as the Stealth 12 as well. So you've got your cupboard compartments here for all your um, goodies, your storage of pasta, whatever you want. I just put down all the toiletry stuff down there, tissues, toilet paper, bit of food, and whatever else you want there. He heaps of space. Heaps, heaps of space. Because don't forget you've got your pantry outside as well. Yeah. Which I had half empty, so that could really go into the pantry, so. Yeah. You've also got your little tunnel boot in here, which is the same as the 12 that goes right through. This little LED light here, Whoa. it moves, it's very bright, it moves in different directions. So mm. I find that really handy. We haven't seen it, we always oh, saw that in the Stealth 12, but it definitely wasn't in the van that we travelled in, was it? No, no. Nice little innovation. Yeah, and you've got your little sink to wash your hands, brush your teeth or if it's pouring with rain and you haven't set up your out, outside area, this is a great little sink for your wash up or to run your jet boil or whatever you want if you're not using your burner outside. Yep. So I find it really good. Um, then you've got, Ant's gonna take you through your board. Uh, light controls, your Fury and head unit again, which is standard on this particular model, but an upgrade from the past. Um, really quickly as well, this one is fitted with the AC transfer inverter so simply toggle your power on here from your inverter and it'll run through your startup phase and your power comes Good. on and you've also got your little cupboard in here which i like to keep obviously your wipes because when you let's face it when you change the toilet cassette you want to have those handy <laughs> nearby try not to get it on your hands so though. what better place to have it at the door when you come back around um and i just put the keys and bits and pieces in there so a couple of other little Easter eggs in this particular van and standard inclusion Easter eggs, which is um, always lovely when you think about a price point and how much you get in included. So up here, we've got our Dometic dust reduction system internal unit. Uh, we love these, as we've said in previous videos, they are a must have, particularly if you're traveling off road as much as we do. Uh, you've also got Sirocco fans in each corner of the van. So two lovely position uh, Sirocco fans. We love our Sirocco fans, they're nice and quiet. And the gimbal action gives you 365 um, degree play, a field of play. Um, we, what else did we have? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a, a different air conditioner to what we've used to using, and we're gonna test this one out when we get onto power later on in this particular video, but we've got the Webasto, uh, which is a really solid brand in um, the RV marketplace around the world. Air conditioning unit fitted to this particular model. All of these things that I've just run through are standard inclusions, including the 200 amp hours of lithium, the power pass inverter, and the uh, Furion head unit as well. So. Um, jam pack full of those little things that when you look around the market you're going to have to pay thousands upon thousands extra all wrapped up into the price point for this particular van so well done so that's it that's the stealth 15. it is a stealth 15. i actually did forget to show you one thing on the outside of the van the electric roof actuators and we said in our last video <laughs> how much we loved it that was one of those things that um, we just probably would not be able to go back to 
having to lift the roof manually and we've gotten that used to it that I bloody forgot about them. So really, really quickly, I just thought I would show you as well. You've got a, a manual control to lift and close the roof down here next to the unit, but it's also remote controlled. So there is a remote here for the roof actuators to lift up or put down. So, um, you know, depending on where you are in the van, you could be running around outside with the remote in your pocket and go bing and up <laughs> it goes, or you could be running around in the front of the van here already getting set up and just hit the button there. So um, multiple ways that you can lift the roof. And I don't know how I forgot about the roof actuators, but um, there's been lots of questions around those as well. Really, really quickly, unfortunately, guys, it can't be retrofitted at this point in time anyway to any of the other vans that are floating out there simply because the roof has been extra braced and reinforced for the actuators and those sorts of things. So unfortunately, um, you can't retrofit those just yet. Don't ring the guys at jail because they've been getting a heap of calls and unfortunately they can't do that. But so many um, innovations and upgrades over the um, the original Solera 15, which was a beautiful and good selling van anyway. Now it's got the stealth look to it and it's also got uh, all of these additional features added in here as standard. So. Um, you know, we're loving having a van that we don't have to pop the back out. That's probably the main thing with this one. But um, great little van. Okay guys, um, this is something that you will go through in your handover, but it is something that we noticed while we we're traveling around Australia, not just jar owners, but other hybrid owners. Uh, people are missing out little bits and pieces around hooking up your van and also the functionality of the arc jockey wheel and the DO35 hitch. Now, before I start, we learned really early on, Mavo and I, that we needed a really solid rule. When I was hitching the van, that there was to be no other orders or instructions or questions or anything like that to interrupt, simply because there's a bit of a methodical uh, way that we go about this to make sure, one, that we're hitched up properly, and two, we're gonna be safe when we hit the road. So, got the car into position here. I'll run you through how I go, um, or what the process is that I use to get through. So, we're just gonna drop the, uh, van onto the ball here now keep your hand clear because some of the time it will slide a little bit and as it did just then now as i'm winding i take my left hand and i press that button straight away because you just need it your van attached to your car is a good idea now wind this up and i always wind it up and then just give it a tiny bit of an extra turn because we have had a situation where the jockey wheels moved are on us in transit. Now, this is a bit about the arc jockey wheel. I noticed a guy on some one of our recent travels where he was using wheel chocks to get his car up high enough to be able to swing the jockey wheel down. So really, really quickly, guys, you need to know that there's four ways that this will move. It, yes, it moves up and down, or sorry, um, swings up and down, but there's also a height adjuster there on the jockey wheel. So I always lock it into this highest point. I'll take this chain off, otherwise it won't work. And then I'll swing it around to that particular point there. So remember that you've got your height adjuster and it makes a hell of a lot easier. Because if you're going to a site where you don't know what the fall of the land is going to be, that you've got the jockey wheel in its highest position. Now, I usually when I've pressed that pin, also just let the handbrake off because you don't want to drive away with the handbrake on um, but it's a really other a, another good one to have in your mind now there's going to be a debate on this i'm sure someone's going to leave a comment to tell me why but i still crisscross the chains now um, that's the way that jala do it when they hand over it's the way that i've always done it on vans and trailers that have had double chains on them so i always crisscross the chains this d shackle has a very big shaft on it and it's hard to lock in and there's lots of winding to do so when I do this side I'll do that grab my electrics here 
whack that in place. This is my uh, battery charging cable. Slide that into place as well. Grab my other chain ready to go. A breakaway cable ready to go. Now, this is an added piece that when you put the cap onto the DO35 hitch, it will not click into place if you haven't pressed this pin. So if you're having trouble, and some of the time I have trouble even when the pin's in, if you don't hear that click like it just did and you can't lift it off, that means that it won't be able to do that unless that pin is engaged with the hitch. So um, that's all done. It's two steps, um, but it's a fail safe knowing that you're not gonna have your van come off as you hit a bump going down the highway. Handbrake is off, jockey wheel's into position. Let's grab my little wheel holder, chuck her in there, click her up, and I'm pretty much ready to go. I'll do my other safety chain. Now that little carabiner there is actually for the breakaway cable. So, pop that into fit place, finger tight. They always tighten up on a bit of a travel. About to go on a dirt road, so they will certainly tighten up. And then your breakaway chain, sorry, your breakaway cable, just into place here. Always making sure that your breakaway cable is shorter than your chains, because if you do for whatever reason lose your hitch, these chains in the event when the van pulls it tight, you need this to pull the pin on the breakaway cable to lock those brakes up on the van. So obviously that's gonna keep, the chains are gonna keep that attached to the, um, to the car. However, if your breakaway cable goes, the brakes come on in the van and you haven't got a van doing 100k an hour behind you as it, as it comes free. So just a bit of a tuition on how to do this. Everybody probably sees this as pretty straightforward, but make sure um, you run through that process and just stay methodical about it every single time you do it and you'll be fine. So we left Rocky Point and we've headed to Elliott Heads, which is about an hour south of Rocky Point, about 20 minutes south east, I guess, of Bundaberg. It's a really nice spot and it's a really nice caravan park, um, powered and unpowered, really reasonably priced and um, the people that run it are really, really good. So. Um, Got to give that a huge thumbs up if you're looking for somewhere to stay around the Bundaberg region. Uh, we really like this place. It reminds us of our old family park down in Evans Head in New South Wales before they ripped everything out and put cabins in. There's heaps of families. Uh, people have been coming for 30 years and just having a great time. And uh, other than the weather, which is, it's not raining and it's not cold, but there's quite a southerly or an easterly at the moment blowing, uh, which is making it not as good but it's still beautiful. We're all the kids having a great time. Patrol yeah. Beach, it's not a huge beach, but. No, it's really good. It's nice little yeah. It's a kiosk over there. The reception to the park here, there's a surf club. And on site number four, it's huge. Plenty of room for Barry, plenty of room for the stealth. Here we are. 
huh? Great little spot. Yeah. Totally. Especially if you've got family and kids. Those who have watched our earlier videos know that I really like gin. Um, we are here at Kalki Moon Distillery in Bundaberg. Bundaberg is such a big town, hey? Yeah, massive. It's massive. So widespread. Very widespread. Oh, sorry. So it's not just rum distilleries, it's gin distilleries as well. And this one has a cool logo. Alright, so I've got myself a gin paddle. I've got four different types of Kalki Moon gin. And I'm just adding my garnishes before I put my tonic in. This is a premium. It's quite nice actually. Is it? Mm, it's really nice, you like that. You yeah, have a try. Maeve got drunk on gin when she was young when we first oh, met. It tastes and like bloody perfume. Oh. Alright, so we just had a good oh, chat yeah. to Rick, uh, the guy that runs the place, and uh, he's given us an opportunity just to have a quick walk around and get some footage. So um, they've done a great job here actually. It's a main bar and tasting area, there's a Maeve. Drinking at midday. The still's running over here. It's like the inside of a washing machine. It's all the warehouse with all the barrels aging away. Distribution of the pre-mix stuff. That's all mixed with Bundaberg, um, Bundaberg cordials that are made here locally as well. Lots of uh, barrels of happiness there on the wall. It's a great little place. Make sure you get yourself down here, not just the rum factory, but a Kalki Moon Gin factory as well. Here is the range at Kalki Moon, plus all the ingredients that the guys use. All right, so little Maybe's in, in control because I had a whole gin paddle and then had to have hers because apparently yeah. she doesn't like gin. It's disgusting. Now we're at Australia Macadamias, which is a tourist attraction in Bundaberg. Although where we grew up in the Northern Rivers of New South Wales is also Macadamia is Australia. Oh well, probably no business called that, but it's where the macadamias come from. So we're gonna go in. I'm hoping to get some oven roasted and salted macadamias because they are divine. I've just had to wipe up your drool as we drove in. Oh, <laughs> that was your drool from eating a habarino chili <laughs> earlier on Shut today. Up. Shut up. <laughs> All right, here we are at Aussie Mac Austra, Macadamia's Australia. Get it right. Here we go. Get, get right. you right. You can't even park a car. We're just serious. Here we go to the, looks like a bloody embassy, but anyway. I don't know whether you can see the chocolate pouring there. And look, they're packaging them up over here. We just did this experience and tried a lot of these. Lemon myrtle was pretty cool, I reckon. Mm, different. Uh -huh. Those of you who don't know us that well, we actually used to have a farm <clears throat> that was surrounded by macadamia farms in northern New South Wales. So I grew up as a kid at about 12 picking macadamias up off the ground before mechanical harvesting. So we know macadamias pretty well, but uh, northern New South Wales, slightly different area to Bundaberg, but the same really red alluvial soil. This place is really cool. So little Maeve has been macadamia shopping. <laughs> what did you get? Don't kick your toe. We got happy nut vanilla. <laughs> so yummy. You love vanilla so, happy nuts, don't you? Bit of a gift pack happening there for some Christmas presents. And then also lemon myrtle. That was so good. Great on a platter. Mm. The flavour keeps changing and keeps on giving. You must try. Um, and then we also got honey roasted macadamias. <laughs> for you. For me. You're not allowed to have any. All right, well, we are now going to Tina Berries. How exciting. Yum. It's a working farm that makes ice cream. Uh, we're not going to the rum distillery now because 
Not we've been today. rooting around too much and now we've we've missed the last tour. But we'll do it tomorrow. Oh, wow. Yeah, look strawberry. at all the little strawberries. Look at those. They look delicious. I yeah. love luscious berries. Look <laughs> <laughs> at girl. Um, look at them. Look how shiny. They are rippers. Look at those. Look how they are. Just beautiful. What is beautiful like you? Oh god. <laughs> You're really onto it today, aren't you? <laughs> Sharp, mate. <laughs> Haven't got COVID, obviously. <laughs> Come on, let's go down and get some ice cream. <laughs> The big bottle of rum, I don't really like Bundaberg rum either, although I am partial to other rum, namely spiced rum. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's not too bad. Kraken. Great, you like a Kraken. You like a Bacardi, that's a rum. Yeah, true. Yeah. All right, here we are in the Bundaberg rum distillery. I'm going to do a tour, but there's a bit of a... There she is, learning about rum. Yeah. We had to make rum. Here we are at Bundaberg's Big Barrel, which is the soft drink factory. Yeah. Where they make Bundaberg ginger beer and yeah. root beer and sarsaparilla and all sorts of delicious sugary soft drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make stock in that. Oh wow, they've got little Bundaberg rum hedges. I mean Bundaberg ginger beer oh, hedges. Cute. I didn't realise. What a cool place. We've just done our tastings. We did all 14 flavors. And now we get to get six of our own. Mavo will take like three days <laughs> to choose what she wants because she's bad at choosing. I'm not. I've nearly already got mine. That apple cider was nice. Yeah, maybe something different. I might get two sides. And <clears throat> did you like? Oh. No, that's a bit too much. Is that the sarsaparilla? Did you get the pina colada one? Where is that? I think it's the coconut one. Oh yeah, that one. No, I didn't. Pop it in. Pop it in? We'll share. Sure. Yeah. You don't, you don't like to touch mine. Alright, let's go. G'day guys, uh, welcome to part two of the Stealth 15 review and uh, we've come south down to uh, where my family come from, a place called Southwest Rocks in mid the mid north coast of northern New South Wales. We absolutely love it here, I've got many great family memories and we're down here visiting my 92 year old grandmother. Yeah. Um, but we are, we've just arrived at our one of our most favorite places in Australia, actually. Yeah. So we're gonna have a uh, awesome day down here. We might get the stand up paddle board out. It's nice and warm. Yeah, it's a no cracker wind. of a day today. Mm. So there are so many boats out here. I'll show you, it's so cool. The ocean color is just this amazing blue, isn't it? Let's go and have fun. Yeah, let's go. thing about Southwest Rocks is the ruins of the old jail, Trial Bay Jail. 
you take a look. Hello, little buddy. Oh, hello. Look how cute. Hello. Oh, oh. <laughs> go on home. Go on home. It's looking hot in there. It's hot. So this is the Jubei Jail camping. We've camped here before. We had ocean views before. Oh, it is an absolute night. Some people come to places like this to go for a swim. I know. This goose brings his bloody fan and goes climbing. No pressure.
Learn how to shuffle, mate. Oh, I'm trying. The shit at it. Jaden's wearing my jumper from before I met Mrs. Maguire. 1952. Uh, all <laughs> those years ago. <laughs> um, and Tails has got a brand new jumper. Oh, no, I've got them around the wrong way <laughs> again. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, hell. He had one job, hey. Oh <laughs> he stitched me up, Tails. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Someone dealt herself in your car. Yeah, she's funny. You should have. We're leaving this lovely little place at Bellingen. We were hoping for a nice day to enjoy the creek and kayak, but the rain set in, so we're having to leave. Rocks. How's it going? <laughs> oh, We're shit, videoing. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. You're right. I'm gonna quickly get my shit out and then I'll get out of your way. Oh, you're right. We'll be two seconds. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, we forgot to do an intro. Hey guys, it's Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all good, all good. A Jawa, so uh, we're looking forward to this one. And why, why is that, maybe? I'm hoping that we might be able to see some turtles laying eggs on the beach. That'd be good. I was talking about the Stealth 15 North, and we've got the uh, brand new Stealth 12 uh, behind Barry. Uh, sorry, Stealth 15 behind. Uh, the Stealth 12. Let's get back to that. Stealth yeah, 15, so, mate. Oh, sorry. Oh.